Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. And um, my guest this morning, get that out of the way, an old friend of the house goes way back. He's been quite a stranger, Honorable Dio Bush, Alebi Oshu. Honorable Dio Bush is a former member of the House of uh, Representatives, and Correct. this goes back to the sixth and the seventh uh, session of the National Assembly. Correct. It's, it's, it's a great pleasure to have you once again. It's lovely to see you again. Thank you very much for coming on. Okay. So, um, you, 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 you know, uh, uh, you're a front runner in, the, in your party, APC. In fact, you served, before going to the National Assembly, um, you were in the cabinet, so to speak. I mean, you were special advisor on assistant housing, on a special assistant on housing, on, on, on housing uh, to uh, uh, Governor Tinumbu, as he then was, Correct. you know, uh, back in the day. So, um, you've been... You know, you've had this association with him for quite a while. And uh, I guess we could pick your brains a bit about um, your perspective on what to expect uh, in terms of national development. In other words, setting an agenda for the Tinumbu administration. Mm. Now, the mere announcement, I mean, the, where he's being sworn in, uh, you look at the papers and you see that the investors reacted positively right. uh, when you look at the uh, money markets, the stock exchange and all of that. At the same time, there's a sort of a nationwide, I wouldn't go as far as calling it a chaos, but pains galore um, that we probably shouldn't have had. Uh, but, well, give me, give me your take on, one, what has happened, uh, that is to say, following the announcement of the removal of subsidy, which President Tinobu confirmed uh, in his inaugural address, right. um, but the, there's been explanations since then that, look, calm down. All of us be calming down. It's not kicking off immediately, not until June. All that the president said was that uh, there was no budget for it. And um, this has been interpreted as it has been. And uh, before we know where we are, there's panic buying reports of people buying fuel anywhere up to uh, 600 naira, anywhere from when you see 200 naira, 250 naira, you quickly grab that. So give me your thoughts on one, how we shall get over this hump, and then two, what to look forward to in our administration of uh, Ashwaji Bola Metinumbu. Well, um, I, I would say, I, I, I would say he's, he's who I would call an innovator. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, he ranks amongst uh, the very few 2.5% you normally have as innovators. And if, if you listened to his, um, his inaugural speech, he touched on a few things, on what to expect. That's right. Um, all through his campaign, he had mentioned that, he's, he, had met, he, he, he had talked on his sentiments about, uh, as regards the fuel subsidy. We all know what has been the issue that, that we had had in the past, especially at the National Assembly, um, investigations into uh, oil subsidy and things like that. And we all know it's out there. Are the people really benefiting from it? He understands the terrain. He appreciates and understands uh, that we need to fix education. We need to fix our currency, our foreign currency. We need to our exchange rates. We need to fix uh, interest rates. I mean, um, and when he mentioned that there wasn't going to be anything as regards, I mean, that there was not going to be any subsidy, <laughs> he hadn't, they haven't even come out. This administration hasn't even thrown out there what they will be doing. He was just snippets of what to expect. And boom, uh, within a 12-hour period, yes. uh, we, we can see that there are actually people out there who decided to take advantage of that, because if they were actually selling freely, what's the reason for, for the queues we're seeing? There's none. Well, these things happen when at a, you, you know, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it is perhaps our current level of development. As soon as people see that they can make a fast buck here, right. they dive in, exploit the people. Um, so people are now, as you know, hoarding uh, only, Putting, owing, allowing one, maybe two pumps in service. The station might have about eight, ten pumps, maybe twelve pumps. Uh, so this is the way it is. That's not the only thing you see. 
you see the situation where um, the SSS and uh, and the um, uh, EFCC, right. uh, where FA, uh, DSS uh, allegedly, reportedly barricaded uh, the entrance to um, the EFCC office in Aolawo Road in Ikoi. Uh, some dispute, some spat about ownership of the place. Why are all of these things happening, or are they to be expected? Or do we just need a bit more discipline? At least, thankfully, I saw something in the papers that the uh, the president has um, uh, directed that um, you know the barricade or whatever it is properly called be removed. Uh, so it looks like people will be trying to see how much they can get away with. In that term, uh, how resolute a man, from your knowledge, do you think the president is? Can you, you get away with some things that are, you know, are smelling a bit fishy. I, 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 he, he's somebody who doesn't shoot and hope. He's somebody who aims before he fires. And we need to understand, I mean, you remember in those days, every administration had tried to effect the use of seat belts. It didn't happen until he's, and even the years after he, be, he left as governor, people are still afraid because if, if you did the one-way uh, thing, you had to go for some mental yeah, yeah, analysis yeah, 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 yeah. and things. Um, he's somebody, we've had presidents, but we now have a leader as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. the much I know of him. A good example is some decisions he, he would take as required by his duties, his job, will not be popular, but they will be effective as required by the Constitution. Um, he's already spoken, like you said, on, on, on that issue. He made it clear he was not afraid of losing the elections when he said, listen, when I get there, we're going to kick out, sub I mean, there's not going to be anything like subsidy. He said it. Yes, that, he said it before. He was speaking with the business community. Absolutely. And that's why you have in the public business space. interests, you know, identifying with him. Absolutely. Saying that, yep. It's, it's long overdue. Absolutely, absolutely. Of what use has it been to anybody? Um, we also need to understand that uh, th there's going to be need for th what you call consequences and repercussion. Uh, for those who take advantage, undue advantage of the system, it means it would be putting serious strain. Do you know how much um, the economy will lose as a result of cars, vehicles going to queue up? So rather than putting, you might end up being on the queue for another six, seven, eight hours. Those are the, that's the period you need for a proper working, productive. A, a, a productive period. So they're denting, or putting dents on the economy. What we need right now, it's like a song. No, no song is complete without a chorus. Mm. If we have a good lead singer, we need to have great backups. And, th and that is what we hope indeed will be uh, what everybody will do because um, it's far too early, some people uh, are saying, for us to be running into these kind of uh, challenges. Now Labour uh, wants to get in on the matter. But the, the one thing we, we know about Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Tinubu, um, not sort of instigating anybody against anybody, but um, you know, uh, when uh, he, he, he will call it the way it needs to be called. That's right. Even if uh, there are times when, even it happened during his whole campaign, there are times when people who were his supporters have said, oh, hasn't he gone a bit too far? Oh, now he's gone and junked everything. It turned out to have been the right decision. And now we have this situation where he said there at the inauguration that um, it's gone. And it's like that was the catalyst for everything. Oh, it's gone. Now, some people are saying um, perhaps the president needn't have spoken so, so forthrightly. I disagree. I think we've gotten used to telling our leaders what to do, or the president what to do. This is a president who knows what to do, mm -hmm. and he's sticking to his guns. Mm -hmm. When you're not sure of your decisions, and you get criticism, mm -hmm. it affects you. you want to, it's natural for you to want to pull back a bit. But when you're sure, you're certain, you know what you're talking about, you know your onions, no matter what's thrown at you, you remain resolute. Because the whole point is to make sure you deliver on your promises, on what's expected, and that's what he's doing. He's not waiting to listen to anything. He's, he's, he's not 
being reactive, he's being proactive, yes, let's put indeed. it that way. Because he's looked at the situation. Because this reminds me, what, what you just said reminds me about, um, uh, 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 forgive the analogy, even Nigerian soccer, you see that everybody at home is an expert That's right. on, on who the coach should field and how the run of play should go. Uh, and we sort of take that for granted that that's the way it is. But this governance is not a game of soccer. We've been talking about uh, Ashwajibola Ahmed Tinubu being uh, uh, you know, you know, a, a leader, you know, he's, he's a strategist. Um, and as you've just said, he studies the situation. He knows, he, he determines what is right. And this would have taken in all sorts of inputs. And so he would then, popular or not, say this is the way it must go. But I recall when he was meeting with the business leaders in Lagos, one of the innumerable uh, uh, sort of uh, meetings he had of that kind, and he said, look, let us just not frig around on this whole idea. Subsidy will have to go. And you know, there was applause at the time, but he's been forthright about this. And then Babatunde Raji Foshala, the uh, Honorable Minister, well, former, I think now we talk right. of him in terms of it's just two know, days a day, the former <laughs> Minister of Housing. As of two, a couple of days ago. Yes. Uh, he sort of dropped it gently that you keep on asking me about all of these things. Subsidy has gone. People didn't take too much notice mm -hmm. until the big man himself said, it's gone. There is no provision for it in he the budget. He was emphatic about it. Yes. Um. Well, so we can uh, expect this kind of bold oh, decisions, uh, ab right? Absolutely. We can not... expect this kind of bold decisions. Oh, absolutely. Because We're... we've heard in the past where leaders say, I will do the needful no matter whose ox is God, no matter how many powerful toes I step on, that kind of a thing. I will do the needful if it is about the advancement of Nigeria, right. the development of Nigeria. Well, he's been, like you said, he's been pretty open and straightforward about it because if he hadn't then and just wanted to win elections, he would have meant that he took advantage of the electorate. And he would have probably spent the first six months to a year trying to fix that relationship with the electorate, with the people. And when you look across the, the globe, you would discover that no government, no administration makes it without the support of the people. And besides that, that we know, mm -hmm. it's also important to note that every administration will have a defining crisis. Okay. We're not sure what the defining crisis will be in this case, but he wants to take care of, I, I'm, I'm seeing it that he wants to take care of um, those things he's certain of. The, the, every leader comes into office um, with, with, um, with passion. There are certain things they're going to be very passionate about, and that's why um, some things he was a bit, he seemed a bit passive about, and some things he was um, emphatic. emphatic about. Like, this, this, this has to go. He had said something like, oh, well, just from what I'm hearing, the much I've heard, mm. he hasn't had the opportunity to look fully into it, uh, to some of those things, and that was why he was a bit passive about it. But he's somebody who is, he's a competitive, his nature is competitive, you know, in a good way. Um, he's driven, um, and he's broken practically all barriers. Uh, right now, um, his competitiveness, I would assume, would want to project him in the area of wanting to leave a long-lasting legacy. There isn't another shot after this. <laughs> He'll do a term or two ter terms, uh, uh, God willing. Uh, what does he leave behind after that? A legacy. And that's what I believe he's working okay. towards right now. Well, he's certainly starting off with the uh, tough end of the stick, so to speak. But then perhaps that's the nature of the man. Can we get all of those out of the way so we can get down to the real business that's right. of uh, governance? Absolutely. Uh, good morning, Mr. George, and thank you for calling in. Good morning. Good morning, Uncle Yuri, and uh, good morning to your guests. Yes, thank you. Uncle Yuri, let me first of all congratulate Nigerians for the dawn of a new era. I am particularly proud that Asuaju has come to the table. And uh, it is time to let right thinking people know that the prophets of doom in this country have been put where they belong. I hope people learn lessons from this. Coming 
to the subject of the, of the day on Kyori. And you know, I am not an advocate of custody removal, but with the advent of Dangote refinery, everybody knew that the days of subsidy was or, were already, you know, over. Because uh, the refinery of uh, Elijah Dangote will come on, uh, I'm told, later in August. So it's just a, a, about two months away from now. So the question of subsidy or no subsidy, is it 50 days subsidy, subsidy we should be talking about? I think what needs to be done now is for the government to take action against people who are taking on due advantage of the statement the president made. The, the fuel in, in their city now was not put at the uh, unsubsidized uh, rate. They bought it, it was subsidized, and they are holding it. These are the same people that will be blaming the, the government for anything that goes wrong in the, in the society. They forget that people get a, a, a leadership that they deserve. So that is where the issue should be now. I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I like the way the president is, is taking off. Yesterday, I saw something that happened between two security agencies. Within hours, we heard from the president. That is how it should be. The president gave an order, and that's how I expect this, uh, the, the, uh, our insecurity in this country to be tackled. People are looking at the body language of the leader. Anything he doesn't want, they know that he can't fly, and they will be very skeptical in doing it. This is the way you will see. Uncle Yore, I've been watching. For the past three, four days, we have not heard of kidnapping and killing that are happening virtually every day. 40 people will be killed at a spot in one day, and it will look as if they were just chicken, and life just goes on like that. This is not going to be that type of government. I'm really proud to be a Nigerian this time, and I will continue to do what I need to do in this country as an individual to make sure we are all proud of this country. Good morning. Thank you very much for calling in, Mr. George. Um, him speaking about um, uh, responsiveness there, expecting responsiveness from uh, uh, leadership, and uh, that was just one of those instances. But it still is painful that um, there are fellow Nigerians that are, are taking on due advantage. As he explained it, I think you've already referred to it, the fuel that we're talking about now was not bought at the new price that these guys are selling it Absolutely. at. So why they are doing that, why do, sometimes you, you don't even know when you begin to soliloquize. Why do Nigerians, why are we ready to do almost anything for money? Um, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm actually glad that this is starting off like this, and I'll explain why. I think there's need, it's cultural, it's a cultural issue, regardless of whatever part of Nigeria you're from. It's a national cultural issue that needs to be fixed. And that's one of the things I'm really hoping, I'm hoping to see in, in Ashiwaju's administration is where the, the National Orientation Agency is really, really um, um, gingered to do a lot. There's need to reform, to change how we think. Okay. And culture, what is culture? Culture is nothing but the collective way through which we see things. When we're able to influence that and change that, then it has a lot of impact on a lot of things that we do. And of course, sometimes it requires uh, uh, being engaged and sometimes it requires um, consequences and, uh, and repercussion, if you Indeed. know what I mean. Indeed. Um, but him coming in, we definitely will see for his body language that he means business. And oh, yeah. from not even just the body language, from the decisions he's taken so far and the things, the statements he's made so far. I mean, I, I mean saying that Ashwaju means business, it's like it's like he's been meaning business for 30 years ago. That's right. Just waiting for the right moment. Opportunity. Yes, yes for yes. the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so in that sense. Um, uh, thank you for calling in Dr. Uh, Fashiaki in Akure. Good morning to you. Good morning, my brother. How are you? Very well, sir. Thank you for calling in. I'm happy to be alive to witness uh, Tinubu being sworn in as the president of Nigeria. He has been on this for the past and something years. I want us to go down a memory line. Okay. Go back to 1993. 
when uh, Shiventi Abiola and Tofa was in interview at the NT, I was right inside the studio. And they asked Shiventi Abiola if he's going to increase the pump price of fuel. He said, I'm an accountant. Before I could do that, I will know the, pump price, the, 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 the cost of producing a liter of fuel. Because what they are selling to us now is black market. And after knowing that, I will ask Nigerians to ask if we are to increase or we should sell at a loss. Tinubu has been involved in Abiola, and that's why he said, say away to poverty. That's the of 1993. And Tinubu now said, renew, renew hope. What I'm now saying is that the Nigerians should be patient. Tinubu said he has removed subsidies. It's not even him. It's, it's not him. Policy. Yes. It's because he's been sworn in. So we should be patient and let's know the cost price of that fuel before we start reacting. They have been saying fuel subsidy is calm. Maybe there won't be, there won't be any increment in the price of, of, of fuel. Nigerians are our own problem. We are, we are impatient. Thank you. Thank you very much. We should be patient. We should be patient with Tinobu. Farewell to poverty, renew hope is the slogan of Hope 93. A renew hope is a renew hope of farewell to poverty. We should be patient. And that's my idea. That's, that, that's my advice. Tinobu is going to bring talk off to all Nigerians. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. Of course, um, okay, we just, because this is happening right now, we spoke about that. All sorts of commentators and students of the polity have known that we're going to have to fix two very important things, security and the economy. There are many other things. Absolutely. But grab hold of those two because it is only when there is peace that you can plan for development. That's right. That essentially is what our economic development and policy is. So I am expecting um, some more uh, creative approaches, some more forthright uh, but there's always, a, there's always room for politics, but somehow the electorate knows, the people know when you're, so to speak, frigging with them as opposed to telling them uh, like it is. Because when you do speak, they need to believe that you have spoken and that they can go to the bank with it. Um, you, you see, as regards to that, everything that's happening, I expect anyways. I expect, there's no way a new administration comes through. Um, you can hope all you want. Um, but there are people who still will not agree. Yes. That's why you have um, the, the spectrum. You have uh, uh, who, the people you call innovators. They're about 2.5%. Then you have the early adopters. They're those who believe. And then you have the early majority. I think that's about the early adopters usually are about 13.5%. You have the early majority, 34%. You have the late, late majority, another 34%. And you have those you call the laggards. They're 16%. They want things the way they are. They don't want things to change. Now, um, it has to go through a process. So all they're looking at, all the adopters, the late, early and late majority, and everybody would look at, would be, let's see what he's bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, for those who know, there will be the ones who... It's like sometimes you get 90%, those who talk about you, 90% uh, of those who talk about you have never met you. 5% of them have met you but don't know you. They probably just leave around, oh, I know him, he lives down the road. Then you get another 5% who have met you, who know you. They are the ones who would now sell you, sell what you represent to the rest of the 95%. So I, I would expect that... Um, um, uh, he gets a total cooperation of, of both the National Assembly and uh, the executive arms across the states. And also from within his administration. Absolutely. Because we've seen situations where sometimes, to those of us on the outside, it looks as if those within the administration are working at cross purposes. Correct. Uh, maybe not everybody is uh, in an agreement with what Oga, the way Oga wants to go because of certain interests of theirs. And, you know, so they're busy muddying the waters and all of that. Uh, one just hopes that there will be very, very scant room for that kind of a thing. Let's put it this way. A songwriter has written a song. He gives one to Fela, the same song, and gives Orlando Awa the same song. You cannot expect Fela to sing it the same way as Orlando Awa. Some would come and tell you, uh, Oga, can we tweak it like this? 
And of course, for a stubborn man like Fela, he would insist, I want it the way I want it. I see Tinumbu, President Tinumbu in that light. Mm -hmm. He would have thought of it critically. He's, he's a listener. He, he listens. Indeed. He listens before he takes his decision. But once the decision... He will, once he made up his mind, that's and right. he has his whole team behind him, that's right. he's going to go for and it. And remember, he's always been gifted with the ability of putting the right you know, people in the right Capable place. hands together. Uh, good morning, Mr. Fidel in Oweri. Thank you for holding on. Thank you very much. My name is Chief Fidel Onyeneke. I want to say that there are lessons to learn from this reaction of Nigerians to a statement, a, a statement made by the president with all amount of passion and with all amount of sincerity. And such a statement was negatively interpreted, interpreted and sincerely misunderstood, which led to the reaction of the marketers and so on. I will describe them as Sherlock marketers because they've been waiting for an opportunity to exploit the people. That is why it becomes very paramount for the president to direct all governors to take action, make sure that they sanction all the marketers that participated in the closure of the filling stations and that are still doing that now. But more importantly, this is an, apparently an indication that there is need to engage Nigerians because he shows the feelings of Nigerians at this particular time. National Orientation Agency and the State Orientation Agency, where they exist, should engage Nigerians, educate them, enlighten them, let them change their attitude, and appreciate the fact that we have one country as it is now called Nigeria, and that we must support our leaders by supporting whatever, what, they, what they are doing, that all the good things that they are doing, aimed at uplifting the standard of the people. Let us use public relations, human relations, engagement, advocacy, and talk to Nigerians so that we change our attitude towards government. Since no one person is called government, but rather everybody should jointly support the government for us to achieve our aim. Thank you and God bless you. I'm Fidel Thank you very much, uh, Chief uh, Oyenekwe, uh, for calling in.